Okay, so in the last video, we made uh, this frequency table for this 20 scores on a math test. We're now going to take that information from that frequency table and make a histogram. Now, usually when we want a histogram to look pretty, we'll use some form of software to help make it look pretty, but I want to show you drawing it so you see how it is done by hand and understand how it's made. And I apologize, I don't draw very well with a stylus on a computer screen, so it'll be a little bit messy, um, but I think you'll get the gist of things. So I'm going to move to paint. And we are going to use that table that we had made prior to this. All right, so in my frequency table, and let me move this, if I can, over. And it's hard to see. There we go. All right, so I have already drawn, and as you can see, I'm rather messy when I draw on the screen with a stylus. However, when we make a histogram, we make an x-axis along the horizontal and a y-axis along the vertical. You'll notice on my x-axis, I put all of the lower limits that we had on that frequency table. So the lower limits were 40, 51, 62, 73, 84, and 95. And then I want to go also to what the next lower limit would have been, which would have been 106 if we'd had another class. All right, now, you'll notice on the vertical, I put the frequencies going up from 1. The highest frequency that I had was 7. And then my writing here is a little difficult to read. I've also labeled the axes. This one is labeled frequency. A little hard to write on this screen. And then this one over here on the x-axis is labeled scores. Okay, now here's what I do to make a histogram. A histogram is a lot like the bar graphs we see in um, newspapers and in magazine articles, except that our bars are always connected. They are not set apart from one another. We want them to be exactly the same width, so I tried to space the x-axis as close to the same width as I could. I'm not perfect when I'm drawing. Okay, so on the frequency table, we had that there were two entries or two scores between 40 and 50. So what I do is I draw a bar going up to 2, and unfortunately, my bar is not perfect. All right, and then on the frequency table that we had, there was one entry between 51 and 61. So I'm going to draw a bar here. It goes up to 1. And on the frequency table, there was 5 entries, or 5 scores, that were between 62 and 72. So I go all the way up to 5 for that bar. And on the frequency table, we had 4 scores between 73 and 83. So I will go to the 4, and then between the scores of 84 and 94 on the frequency table, there were 7. So I'm going to go all the way up to the 7. And then finally between 95 and 105, there was only one score, so I want to go up to 1. All right. So notice these bars are all connected unless there happens to be a frequency of zero for one class. And we get what we call a frequency histogram. We can do the same thing for relative frequency by placing relative frequencies on the y-axis over here on the left. We would just have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and so forth and just kind of guess as to where that bar would rise to. We just make a, um, a very strong, educated guess as to where it would fall. So this is what a histogram looks like. Now you'll notice I put these two little slash marks over here on the x-axis. That is to show that there is, that I left out the entries between 0 and 40. It shows that the gap, there is a gap there that I have uh, kind of surmounted without putting 
uh, marks on the x-axis for it, and we're allowed to do that. We want to be careful about doing it on the y-axis because that often distorts the DAF. Uh, so be aware of that as you look for some bad examples of graphs that are misleading. Things that have distorted things on the y-axis will often be one way that that is done. Another way will be that these bars are not of equal width, and we do want them to be approximately the same width for each bar.